Welcome back. Today we got a little shop to do here. Uh, these are our tensional rolls from the Jeep and the bearings are shot. <coughs> these, I think the plastic roll is somewhere 20, 25 pounds, 30 dollars. And this one is about the same, maybe a little bit cheaper, I don't know. Uh, the only problem is the bearing. And the bearings are two pounds, three dollars each um, it's 6203 and if you use the rubber ones and, part, and not not the metal uh, shielded ones they should last a little bit longer this is the original one uh, which was in the car I have an aftermarket in it from crown it lasted probably about three years and now the bearing is shot again so this is probably easy just press it out this one seems to be a bit more tricky because it almost looks like the bearing is molded into the plastic. So we need to put it in the lathe and take a little bit of that material off and then uh, we probably don't know if we lock, use Loctite or epoxy just to make sure it stays in and then we put the, um, the side which we worked on to the front so you can only walk to the engine and not out just in case it comes off it shouldn't because it's guided from the belt um, I think this is not the original one that, that was a, a aftermarket one I bought and it only lasted a year or two so we pressed that out hopefully it works and uh, put new bearings in put it on the lathe just give it a little bit flat uh, and we put that on the lathe as well and just cut out a little bit of that uh, recess here because it's, I don't know if it's visible on camera, but you can't see the outer ring of the bearing. It's much more material than here and I think if I just press it, it may, I may destroy it. So that's a bit of, of a challenge. Um, yeah, you can make one from aluminium, but uh, we'll try it and see. That's the plan for today. So here we go on the press and it's moving actually. Here you go. Maybe there was some Loctite on it. That's what it looks like. You're gonna press it from the back side because this side is narrower. So I pressed it from this side. Let's check the bearing, there might be some Tight on it. No, just rust. So it was just pressed in. That was it. That's an easy one. That bearing is completely shot. It doesn't even turn anymore. Anyway, I uh, just use a piece of round which is smaller than the bearing, and then uh, we'll just do it the other way around. I think we give that a clean and a spray before we do it and uh, then we'll put it back together. So we got it set up in the lathe here. Um, I've just put some paper around and clamped it lightly, it's only plastic. We'll try a sharp boring tool and uh, see how it, how it works. Some light here. We dialed it in as good as possible. Uh, let's see. It's hard to see, but uh, now we're touching the root. And now we're touching the plastic. That's the bearing, the rattling noise. So we just skimmed off some plastic. I think that's enough. It doesn't need much, so if we put something underneath, which is exactly that diameter, and just try to press it out, it may work. Because, uh, can't tell. Let me get a magnifying glass. Uh, gonna tap more, eventually. Not 
few things more. I think we're good now. It's still still a little bit left, but we'll try it. Uh, worst case, we we'll have to do it again. But uh, that may save me from uh, doing some work here. I'll probably put a dab of uh, epoxy on there, or use super glue. I don't know. Or we'll try it on the press now. Well, it moved. I put the washer on the knee to distribute the load a little bit. I think we over the we over the um, the ridge there. Or yeah, it definitely moved. So it's uh, maybe it needs a bit more, but it did move. Okay, I put a washer underneath, which is as big as this one. Something has moved. I just don't know what. Gotta try here. Socket might be a bit too small. Sorry, it's a bit dark here by the presses. Uh, another shot here. So, uh, put the other bit of force on here. But I don't know, maybe we need to. Take out a little bit more. Yeah, we need a bit more. It has moved, but not enough. We need to take out a little bit more. There's no way. All we do is compressing that. To center it roughly, I used the tail stock in the bearing. Um, I could push it back in actually, so we should see now where the material is or where the end of the material is. It does move in it, that's good. Um, so now we we snugged it up and uh, then we just indicate on the bearing race. Alright. So it seems it's having a bit of a hard time when it's coming out. Something is moving. Yeah. Here you go. So yeah, we left. We still left a little bit of a, a hump there. So if we deburr the outer diameter, we can just press it in and perhaps put a bit of super glue on it, and uh, it's not going to move. It's hard to see, but there is still. There's still material left, which is big, although they're smaller in diameter. It was just rusted in. Let's see, Let's see how the bearing looks. That was maybe it, it's been molded in, and I don't know if that's good for the bearing because moldings get hot, so the grease may come out. But it feels like there is some blue stuff on it. Don't know. Maybe it's ultrasonic welded. You know, if they if they mold it with a bit of overshoot here, and then you just use an ultrasonic welder and push it down uh, to make that basically that recess here. You don't know how deep how deep how they produce these things, but uh, we give it a clean. And I think we use super glue. We don't need to do anything. I was thinking about a snap ring, but for what? It's not going to come out. Uh, I will point this side to the engine, so it's not going to fly away. And also, it's a ripped uh, pulley. It can't go anywhere. It's pretty much set up. We'll check it after a few miles and see if everything everything looks good. So all we do is jump for this end, and then we can press the new bearing in. So we pushed it a little bit in and now we're going to put some super glue on the surface and push it fully in. It, you could feel it, it had some resistance so it's not going to come out, just for peace of mind. I put some glue on. Alright, let's do that. 
So I did a firm snap when it went over the hump because we still have some material left. Put some glue in. Uh, should be alright. At least it glues well, sticks well on my fingers. So I hate super glue. It's an awful stuff. All right, we painted the other pulley. Put a new bearing in, and uh, we should be done. So we gave it a lick of paint. Here we got a new bearing. I uh, clean it with some alcohol, and we press it in halfway down. And because I don't know if it's visible, but on the on this side, on, on this side, it's uh, it's a bit smaller. So is it on this side? Uh, and in the middle there is a bit of a groove, or sort of a groove. It's probably just from stamping, I don't know. Uh, what we do, we press it in, so it sets probably a quarter of the distance in, and then we put some glue on, some super glue on. Uh, and I said not to use Loctite, because I only have the soft Loctite, uh, which is useless for this application. So super glue will uh, maybe stop it from moving, I don't know more for peace of mind but I think the old one had nothing in it there is nothing to see it doesn't look like there was any anything on it all right let's do that so we have in put some glue on uh, don't know if it makes a difference I don't know press it in uh, it was flush on the back so that's how far we go I know it's dark here but uh, nothing I can do. So this is exactly the diameter, or just a little bit less than the bearing. So I should go straight in. Wing. Okay. glue came out. It sits as it should be. It's flush on the back. But it glued itself to the rust here. Alright. Two as new pulleys. Uh, half an hour half an hour of time and cost probably four pounds um, six dollars rather than sixty for two new pulleys. So we're going to fit them to the car and we also do the job on the old ones so we have some spares because I know they're going to gonna die. Um, I may also do the aircon compressor at some point, I don't know if I do it now because the bearing of the clutch is worn, it grinds a little bit. So, but that's it from that. Uh, I may or may not show how I fit it, we'll see. Simple job, but uh, yeah, quite a money saving job. Uh, it's always great to save something because otherwise you throw it away. Um, and the bearings are, that's moving. But this one, from this one, was completely stiff. It was actually rotating here on the shaft. It was so bad. And the other one, I know it's grinding. That's the reason why I'm going to do it. So we decided to fit it. It's still nice and warm outside. Uh, we do the belt at the same time. Got a new one here. It's my belt routing is a bit different because I have no cooling fan on this side. It's all electric, uh, so it's a bit shorter than the standard one. Uh, this has probably thirty thousand miles. It's time to do it. Um, and also, this pulley is grinding. You can see it walked its way in. Um, that kills the belt as well. So for easy access, just take the second electric fan out. This is the stock fan. This is my Visco fan replacement uh, to get a fan out. One screw here, one screw here. Take the hose away, pull the plug, take the fan out. That's what we do now. Well, you don't need to take the fan out when you've got slim fingers, but I don't. So these are the two rolls. That's the metal one, that's the plastic one, and uh, it's quite shaved, so I think this is probably moving very hard okay uh, 
you need to loosen that bolt and just wind that back. I guess it's. I know this is different to a left hand drive because I think I think the alternator is on the other side and that's the aircon side. I don't know. And uh, just wind that back a little bit. Uh, we need to wind it back quite a bit because uh, we fit a new belt, so the new belt will be shorter. And just push, push on the belt. And uh, if you if you put the belt on first and then put the last roller on, it's easier because you don't need to go over the pulleys. Uh, so let me take that out and. Uh, let me take the, the whole stuff off and the rolls out and see how they're grinding. So here we have the, it's a big Torx actually, don't know if you can hear it. This one makes even more noise. Spin that. Yeah, that's a play. Yeah, it's grinding binding and grinding it's it's really bad and the bearing got much a lot of play actually so, so this is an aftermarket from crown uh, it's about two and a half years old and it's failed um, it's shit quality well that's what it is and uh, yeah you can feel it's it was so bad I, I oiled it once because it was so bad and I didn't have to read the other ones, I couldn't find them. So now just take the belt off and uh, put a new one on. I need two hands for that. So that's it, all fitted. Uh, mine is a 6 pay K 2120. Yours is going to be longer if you got a left and uh, right hand drive because there is that belt pulley down there which I deleted. So my belt goes straight down from the power steering pump down to the aircon compressor. That's the reason why I need a little bit more tension, otherwise the power steering is slipping. Uh, yeah, if you put the belt on, the bottom tensioner roll first and then just wind that in, um, you will not get the belt over it. If it's this, the, my belt is relatively short, I could probably go 10 millimeters longer. But I want some clearance to the battery here, because I've got a bit bigger alternator and a bigger battery. so. That's why I opted for a little bit of a shorter belt. 2130 would be fine, or 2125, something like that. Anyway, um, once you're done, power it up briefly uh, to settle it and then just check, check the tension again. Rule of thumb is half a turn on the long stretch, uh, which is about right. So let's fire it up and see if it sounds better. And then just check the belt tension again. Yeah, we could do it a little bit more. It's, uh, it's always the belt needs to settle into the grooves first, and then check it after a few miles, just to make sure everything is fine. Don't forget to tension your alternator bolt, and uh, you should be good to go. So if the power steering doesn't squeak. Everything is fine, uh, and with this design, it always tensions it tensions the belt a little bit up if you tighten the alternator to make sure you're not overdoing it. But uh, it's still good. All right, we're gonna repair those, so we have some spares. So far, so good. Job done. Unback 
and then we're good to go. That's it from this one. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, until next time. Thank <laughs> you.